Hi everyone, this is Dan, and this is She, Return of the Warrior, uh, by Billy Tucci, and I believe a few other artists, I uh, can't remember them, but I'm going to put them down in the description. <laughs> and also, uh, the amazing She, number one, uh, Way of the uh, Warrior, I believe, and uh, <laughs> color me impressed. Uh, she is a, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is probably one of the best Indiegogo campaign uh, comics I've backed. Because uh, I remember very vividly, uh, I paid $24 for this package. And I got not only a, a very nicely printed graphic novel, uh, but I also got a pretty sizable, like this is 32 page, uh, first issue edition of, uh, of She Number One. Both of them are signed. And I got this freaking wild pack right here. Uh, I got a print of She, and then uh, got a whole bunch of other stuff too. Like, holy cow. Uh, a bunch of cards. Uh, some of them feel a little bit uh, off, but for the most part, really cool stuff. Oh, uh, man, yeah. A lot of cards. So if you're into cards, this this uh, this project was for you, or this uh, uh, campaign was for you to back, man. Uh, I got a pretty cool sticker. This is pretty nice. I got this uh, really cool Tucci patch. Oh, nice job. And then, uh, I'm not sure if this is a bookmark or if it's just a, is this a sticker or is it, okay, this is a bookmark. Okay, cool. I want to be careful right there. I didn't want to pull this and uh, break it on camera. Uh, but overall, I'll tell you this, uh, this was absolutely uh, worth the $24. Uh, this was fantastic. Uh, and as far as like the content was con was concerned, uh, both of these uh, two books, so I never read She back in the 90s. Uh, my understanding of the character is she was kind of, uh, uh, Billy Tucci and, uh, what's his name again? Uh, the guy who does Lady Death. Oh man, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. I remember, he, he has like the really cool, like, scary, uh, promos and whatnot, or at least what he considers scary anyway. But yeah, she was part of the, uh, bad girl phase, uh, in the 90s, was my understanding of the very little research that I did about this character. Uh, and while, again, as I've said many times before in the channel, uh, I never really actually got into 90s comics. Uh, I kind of visited them later on and, you know, I, I, I kind of have a very 50-50 feel about the 90s. In the 90s, I was mainly reading uh, Archie Comics and Sonic the Hedgehog because uh, I was a wee little lad, so I uh, wasn't really reading the X-Men, Marvel, DC, or any of uh, these books during the 90s. Uh, but what I will say is, uh, uh, color me impressed, she's actually a pretty cool character. Uh, so, I'm gonna get this right off the bat right here. There's one big negative of these two books, and that is they are not complete stories. So, uh, if you want to have an open-shut story, uh, unfortunately neither of these books uh, do that. They will leave you on a cliffhanger, and you gotta go get the next one. That being said, the art and the uh, storytelling, uh, at least for me personally, uh, is good enough to justify getting it. And the sheer value that I got out of the $24 for this uh, campaign, I feel, actually kind of justifies giving it another shot. It's kind of like uh, Cyber Frog in a way. Like, Cyber Frog, uh, it technically isn't a completed story. Uh, if, if you can, if you, depending on what plot or subplot of Cyber Frog Blood Honey, you consider a complete story. Uh, but the overall value of that package was so great that it easily justified uh, picking up Wreck Planet. Uh, the same thing is true uh, for She, Return of the Warrior. Especially if, if Billy Tucci uh, gives you uh, uh, She, Way of the Warrior number two uh, with the next campaign, that, that would be a huge bonus in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, let's get into uh, just going over issue number one. So issue number one uh, uh, is... Uh, it's pretty thick with a lot of a uh, lot of text. Uh, if you're into uh, Japanese stuff, and I don't think I'll get in trouble for this, but uh, if you're into Japanese stuff, this is actually kind of cool. And I kind of am into like Ginsu westerns and samurai stuff, so this is kind of cool to read. But essentially, she is uh, her bloodline is of essentially like an outcast society in Japan. And uh, always fighting with uh, with yakuza and other uh, and other underground societies in Japan, and uh, uh, very beautiful art by by Billy Tucci from the 90s. Uh, and the overall uh, design right here is obviously, of course, sort of uh, very very Japanese, uh, but also very very sexy. 
and of course, what does a superhero in an American 90s comic book do <laughs> once they decide to go out and do superhero things? Uh, they go fuck a bunch of people up in New York City. <laughs> I, I like how all of this always has to occur in New York City. Uh, it's it's such an American comic book thing, but uh, you know maybe maybe that's just the way people thought it had to be because of Spider Man and uh, and all the Marvel characters, I guess. Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, she basically goes around uh, you know killing a bunch of bad guys on the street. Uh, in many ways, it kind of reminds me of Cyber Frog, but the difference here is uh, Billy Tucci's writing is actually pretty decent. Uh, for looking back at the '90s. Uh, he actually put quite a bit of effort into it. There's a lot of use of uh, Frank Miller techniques in here, uh, basically using uh, like inner monologuing within caption boxes, and uh, it kind of works uh, because the the sort of uh, like it reminds you of Ronan in a way, and she in a way kind of reminds me of it. Uh, but yeah, man, it, it's uh, it's pretty rad looking back at this this '90s stuff. Uh, coloring is a little bit beige or kind of colored out, but uh, I'm not sure if there was any changes between this version and the original 90s version. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. Uh, you get some background story. They introduce a lot of uh, main characters to the series. You get a lot of back and forth between her and uh, Arashi, uh, her primary antagonist during the original series, uh, and some other interesting things. And then sort of the plot twist at the end is... Uh, which kind of explains a lot because you're kind of like, okay, why does a samurai lady in New York City, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, her, her mother's American. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but yeah, it leaves you on a cliffhanger, which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, still very good. And considering he just threw this along in here. By the way, newsprint, always love newsprint. Always will love saddle stitch newsprint. Never going to say anything bad about that stuff. Uh, I don't care what people say about paper quality. Uh, you know, newsprint is awesome. Uh, now, she, Return of the Warrior, uh, is essentially almost like a cyber frog leap, where we leap uh, into modern times, like, almost 20 years later. And uh, she is married, she has a kid, uh, she's playing around, and you get sort of a dream sequence that gives you some action to begin with, and then uh, you get kind of jumped into real life right here, or I guess modern life. And uh, it shows her daughter... Uh, one question I have to ask is like, so she, my understanding of she is that she's half Japanese, half white, and she married an American, uh, white guy who has blonde hair, blue eyes, and her daughter still has black hair. Uh, I always figured like eventually like, is, is she, is she going to have kids with, with blonde hair or not? <laughs> Just kind of a weird, uh, sort of, uh, uh observation that I have of the of the character. Anyhow, uh basically uh her her uh father and her daughter uh, Hotaru's uh, uh by the way her name is Anna Ishikawa. I keep forgetting about it, but uh I just name her by her uh hero name, I guess. Uh essentially her uh father's friend gets murdered and this kind of throws a whole bunch of uh events in a sequence. Uh it turns out her arch enemy Arashi uh is uh back and she's got to go uh find him and kick his ass uh but there's a pretty uh fascinating <laughs> and it's actually kind of funny when when she gets back into her <laughs> her original uh costume uh it's actually uh there's a lot of like cute moments in all of this uh but yeah uh, there's a there's a very good plot twist at the end when she uh is fighting arashi and uh and and comes to a realization of uh who the real enemy is <laughs> hint 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 but uh, unfortunately uh, the book does leave you on a cliffhanger, so you got to go uh, get the next book. Uh, that being said, overall, uh, let's see, who's the, I'm going to remember here, who is the artist? Oh, man, I can't remember. Oh, is the credits at the end? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, okay, it was uh, illustrated by, yeah, Billy Tucci, uh, Gardenio Lima, and Ricardo Silva. I don't know who those are, maybe Latin American, maybe Spanish, maybe Filipino, uh, don't know. <laughs> but uh, art overall, uh, fantastic. Uh, story, uh, good, but not a complete story, so kind of a negative there. You gotta go spend more money to finish this story. Uh, the same thing can be said about She Number One, which you get in the same package. Uh, you know, great art, cool story, cool characters, 
uh, but not a complete story. So negative right there. You got to go get number two of this to figure out what the heck happened. Uh, I'm kind of like at this point where I'm thinking like, if you're if you're a story guy like me, I would probably wait till uh, Billy Tucci releases like an omnibus of She, because then you can get the whole story in one go and not have to run around trying to collect stuff, right? Unless you already have the series from the 90s. Uh, but as far as this Indiegogo campaign, art, storytelling, uh, quality, value, uh, definitely a fantastic, uh, just not completed story, so it just falls just short of perfect, in my opinion. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's get to the art. So for this one, I wanted to do a little more uh, action-oriented kind of scenes right here. Uh, and so I was going over it and I was like, you know what, uh, I haven't done, you know, backgrounds. I need to do more backgrounds. So I did just a really simple one point perspective here. Uh, when I look back right now, I was like, ah, oh, dude, I made her like this leg actually needs to be slightly smaller than this leg because it's in the foreground. But I guess they're kind of close that you can kind of get away with it. Uh, overall, pretty happy with this panel. Uh, this panel, I tried to get all weird and show like distorted perspective. Uh, but I think it's too flat right here. I think I should have made like an angular look and have the blade come further up. Then would have had like that really cool perspective like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, and this is just some scumbag is about to get cut in half. There you go. Uh, this panel, I, I kind of regret <laughs> the way I approached this. I wanted her to be kind of crouched, you know, and have this like swoosh kind of look. You know, like have the speed line come through here and be like, yeah, look at him get cut in half. Uh, but it kind of looks weird. <laughs> so, yeah, if I had to do this all again, I would have had her taken more of like a, like an outstretched kind of look like her following through with her, her Naginata, uh, through this dude. Uh, maybe probably put more blood effects here or something like that. Uh, but overall, not a bad, uh, piece of sequential art. Uh, I think it, I actually kind of like it in certain ways and then, uh, in other ways, you know, got a long way to go to get better, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's the art and that's the review. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. You got any comments about She Return of the Warrior or this entire amazing package or my art, uh, leave it down below and I will see you next time.